If you need any help, you can ask the committee. Um, I have shared it now. Good. So good luck with your presentation. And I'll be uh, all the time for you. So I'll mute my phone. Okay, thank you. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Rosha Shayeti. I'm from Egypt. My paper is about a comparative study of ecologist architecture for brand positioning wellness destination. Uh, the scope of the paper is about traveling and how to make it more sustainable and healthier. Uh, using wellness tourism as a very demanding and trendy type of traveling. As it has an effective economic impact on the global tourism income, uh, it was calculated or protected, predicted to reach $7 trillion in 2025. So it was proved that it's very demanding and trendy nowadays wellness tourism. Uh, that's why hospitality facilities as ecologists are very important architecture aspects in wellness destination not only as a sustainable facility, but also as a competitive and attractive uh, destination image. That's why the leading countries in the field of wellness, uh, uh, in the field of wellness uh, use ecologists to brand position wellness destination. Egypt is one of them, as Egypt is a country that endured with a wide variation of wellness potentials. So, uh, brand positioning is a very important developing uh, strategy and must be used if, uh, if Egypt uh, wants to develop its uh, wellness tourism and improve its economic uh, rank. As such, my research aims uh, are divided into main two aims. The first one to reach a branding strategy for Bahare Oasis. Bahare Oasis is a very important destination in Egypt is a very important wellness destination in Egypt and use its uh, ecological architecture to promote the wellness destination image. Second, analyzing branding successful examples as Banasura Hills in India as one of the very uh, recognized, um, as one of the very recognized uh, ecologists in India. Uh, in light of the research aims, the paper hypothesized that Ecologist architecture elements can brand position Bahari Oasis as a wellness image and promote its identity. <clears throat> uh, the paper has highlighted the main terminologies and previous studies concerning wellness tourism, uh, which defined as travel that integrate with, uh, with uh, nature or the use of local treatment methods and highlighted as well the ecological architecture elements uh, at, as it was proved from the previous studies that the architecture context of ecologists uh, can motivate and affect a tourist travel decision, which can make it more attractive and competitive. Um, and also highlighted the brand positioning that is identified as the act of designing a destination image that can formulate consumers' uh, minds toward a specific destination. Uh, the research has used two main methods. The first, comparative analysis, and the second is a field study method, which is comparing between Panisura Hills Lodge in Kerala, India, and Kosri Bawiti in Bahare Oasis, Egypt. Uh, the, re the researcher has chosen India as one of the leading countries uh, in, uh, wellness, um, in wellness tourism, and also they, they are using branding strategies to improve wellness tourism and tourism generally. However, they have a problem in applying sustainable uh, methods in tourism, and they are using uh, branding to solve those problems. In Egypt, we have this problem as well, and we are work, working on our branding strategies and would like to improve our wellness economy as well. Kerala uh, is branded in India as the capital of wellness in the world. 
uh, and the, the, the area or, or the urban context of Banasura is uh, preserved by UNESCO and have uh, many natural uh, environment and natural tourism, tourism attractions. Uh, Bahre Oasis on the other side uh, has 400 thermal and silver, silver spring that is used in, uh, in wellness uh, treatments and wellness tourism. It's very accessible to, Ka to Cairo, which is the capital of Egypt and has a unique architecture. As a result from uh, uh, the analysis for both cases, uh, it was found that both cases are located uh, in an isolated uh, region, but they are surrounded by many uh, touristic attractions. Both cases has wellness <laughs> attractions. However, <clears throat> however, the architecture of Panasura is more recognized internationally, and it was proven by many uh, references. Uh, um, and the services of uh, Panasura uh, was measured by uh, recognized the travel agencies, which has online reviews from tourists, um, but it has more satisfying uh, services than uh, Coastal Bawiti, which was measured by uh, site observation and inside survey. Both cases has used local material, but in Panasura, they were succeeded to use this more uh, this local material in more advanced ways. Uh, as a result, the evaluation score uh, for Bansura was 72% and Kostru Pawiti was 58% because Panasura has more satisfying wellness services and hospitality amendments than Kostru Bawiti. The architecture image of Panasura is more internationally recognized Kasra Bawiti doesn't use many um, trendy or advanced sustainable uh, solution. They only depend on spontaneous architecture, uh, which, uh, which, can, which, which can raise tourist awareness of natural resources. As a conclusion, uh, the hypothesis uh, of the paper was proved, three of the hypotheses of the paper was proved that there are three main architecture aspects affect brand positioning, which are wellness potential, architecture form, and service quality. And it was proven that it was used in Panasura Hills. That's why it's branded and well-known and recognized uh, the paper is uh, recommending a branding strategy for Kasral Bawiti to, uh, to be brand positioned and use its architecture as a uh, uh, and use its architecture in the brand position strategy by four steps. First, uh, suggesting a collaborative plans between different stakeholders, uh, private and public that are interested in tourism and health sector because wellness is affecting health sector as well. And the, the most important thing is to, uh, to make, to, uh, uh, um, to use local people and interfere them in the collaboration plans. Second, to set a, a, a competitive brand identity that could reflect uh, the destination identity and local people identity and their way of, of, of wellness. Uh, using the architecture elements of the ecology. Third, uh, specifying a, a communication strategy to develop uh, um, stakeholder, uh, to deliver stakeholder vision and fulfill tourist needs and raise the quality of services in the ecology. Uh, as well, the, the fourth uh, step is to, uh, is to continuously evaluate the brand experience the visitor are experiencing, so we can uh, uh, develop uh, this strategy uh, according to their needs, to their changing needs as well. The last recommendation, the paper, or the most important recommendation uh, the paper uh, ha has highlighted, uh, there must be interdisciplinary studies to enhance the relation between branding strategies and hospitality services, considering uh, the architecture elements. Thank you so much. Personally, I enjoyed your presentation and I just want to ask whether any of the 
audiences would like to ask any question. Do we have any question from the audience? Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. All right. So, uh, do you, Miss Russia, I enjoyed your presentation. That was quite interesting to myself, knowing about uh, Egypt. Uh, the topic is quite interesting. Um, there are only a few questions mm -hmm. that I wanted to ask if there's no questions from the audience. All right. So, uh, this is somehow a question that I'm going to ask regarding your case studies. So may I know what are the reasons for selecting these two samples? Because sometimes when you um, make some comparison study between two case studies, they might mm -hmm. have something in common that's uh, going to make a re reason for us to select. For example, we can say both are private sector or both are in suburban area. They should have something in common that you could put them into a comparison. Can you please explain uh, what was the reason that you picked these two? Because according to your research um, ranking, so I just wanted to check uh, what was your reason for selecting these two samples? Okay, uh, my reason for selecting uh, those case studies uh, in um, uh, selecting Egypt, of course, because uh, uh, we would like there are plans nowadays to improve uh, wellness tourism in Egypt and in India as I well. Understand. They are yes, but how many how many kinds of freezers do we have in Egypt? Is it only how this many? one? Yes. Sorry, I I I can hear your question. Can you repeat it, please? Okay, I'll say that how many how many. Uh, this kind of services do we have in Egypt? Is that only this one or do we have another one? No, we have another ones, uh, but uh, this okay, so uh, coastal Bawiti is, is it's the oldest ecology in, uh, in Bahariya Oasis and uh, it's owned by local people uh, such as Banasura right. Hills. It, it is owned by local people as well. So there is an integration okay, the reason between that you pick these two. Okay, I understand. The reason that you pick these two mm -hmm. is because they are um, running by local people. There is no international yes. influence there. All right, but uh, they are both in suburban area and they are considered as private sector, right? Yes. Okay. So um here are some comments that I just want to help you strengthen your research for future. So I, I told you already the positive part was very, I mean, you could come up with a very good conclusion. That was your most strength. I still I would like to suggest you when you come up with your slide, presentation slide, what will happen mm. is that uh, before having your own oral presentation, we could have some more information from your slide. That was um, missing literature review in the slide, which I would suggest you for your next presentation, coming up with a little bit more of literature review. And okay. uh, the referencing, yeah, the referencing is very important. I would like you to consider the research, that one. And then regarding the research methodology, same. I know that you have done uh, very good research, but if I just want to judge you based on your slides, um, in the mm -hmm. research methodology, we didn't put, we couldn't find out the information, let's say that was a questionnaire or was interview, how many people were involved and all these kinds of things. So uh, maybe my comment to you is that uh, you have done a very good research, but when it comes to presentation, it didn't show up all your efforts. Your oral okay. presentation helped a lot. But I mean, the graphic and then with some more information could help more. Otherwise, uh, well done. Okay, thank you. I would like to clarify just one point uh, because there are a limited uh, number of slides. So I couldn't put all, all the paper or all the information in the paper yes, in those I slides. Yeah. I tried to summarize it as much as I can. Coming up, but 
let's say you have this uh, you will refer to read to read and you are having an uh, issue facing the time of conference presenting or public life. I suggest to you is all this come up to the table to show your lecture review support your presentation. So just consider for your next presentation. Otherwise, it's fine. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, Can we proceed with our second presenter regarding an idea of retirement village business model in Malaysia? Uh, yes, sure. I'm Safarina. I will be Hello, the Ms. presenter Safarina. for this. Yeah. Thank you so much. So here we do Yeah. Presentation, and it's my pleasure to have you as our next presenter. So, I just want to remind you you have 10 minutes for presentation and five minutes for QA. So, if you're ready for sharing your slide, let's do it. All right, okay. So, this is all yours, and then I'll be see you again in 10 minutes. Okay, thank you uh, for this uh, this uh, the, the session uh, the, uh, the session show. Uh, I'm uh, hello, uh, assalamualaikum. Uh, I'm Safarina uh, from uh, from University Technology Malaysia, just um, as a presenter today. And for this um, uh, paper or this uh, research I'm doing uh, with my colleague, which is uh, with uh, Mr. Muhammad Raziz Shah, and also um uh no shafadila and, and one uh, another click is from uh Leeds Beckett University which is a, a Zainab okay so okay so uh the title of the research is uh, uh and ideals of the uh, retirement village business model in Malaysia uh, just for the analysis of the of two case study uh so as far uh, for, for the Malaysian itself, uh, we do uh, we, at the moment, which is Malaysia is on uh, on course uh, to become a, an aging nation, which is Malaysia is uh, uh, through the statistic, which is uh, uh, obtain aging nation status by 2030, by which 50% of the nation population will be aged over 60 years old. From that, uh, which is um, uh, the, this uh, from this um, field, uh, from from these uh, issues, we come up with the the idea which is we want to study about the right uh, re, the concept of the re retirement village, uh, which is uh, centered around allegedly healthcare and lifestyle. Which is, uh, however, in Malaysia, the concept is still uh, considered to be new in Asian country. In Malaysia itself, uh, the provision of the of uh, retirement village is still considered a blue ocean due to having low supply as compared to the other type of property, which is um, which is um, in order to provide the in order to develop the prop uh, the, the the retirement village may be uh, may be a challenge in Malaysia because of there are many uncertainties from uh, from land use classification to getting the approval. Um, the the challenge in developing and managing retirement home include the relatively higher rise involved, the need for a suitable uh, uh, the need for a suitable uh, business model and annuity and transfer issues you put in the date. It is uh, the, the, the issues, uh, the challenges uh, surrounding in developing the retirement village, which is in Malaysia, the development of long lasting retirement village that come with the educate care concept face of significant obstacle that is the lack of a suitable regulatory and policy framework as well as guideline on retirement village. So from that, this study, we are focused only. Uh, we are focused on the on the the current um, development, 
which is have been done by the uh, only a few only a few developers which is um, uh, which is uh, not only i think uh, from this study only are citing almost at the seventh uh, development the, and also the proposed development which is within the in Malaysia, some of them in Sarawak. Uh, there is a one site, one uh, one project in uh, Sarawak, and the rest in Peninsular Malaysia, which is some of them already completed in early 2015. This is uh, the 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 statistic of the development of the right river village, which is this is only for the commercial one, right? So overall, uh, from the uh, uh, the seventh, uh, uh, the seventh development of retirement village here. Uh, the type of the business model adopted in Malaysia retirement village, uh, we we, con uh, we can con conclude into the three types of the model, the the, the, the business model, which is either using the outright sales model or lease for life model, and the last one, which is about the rental model. So from this study, from this um, type of the business model, we only choose. Um, we only choose the uh, two two case study eh, to 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 identify what kind of the element uh, which is uh, that uh, they are choose in terms of the business model itself. All right, then um, we can see that here there is a, a few uh, example the few the few which is um, the retirement village has been developed by developer. One of them, which is a uh, green leaf, okay, green leaf project in Selangor, which is um, by uh, the development is using the the uh, ideally the city retirement village should uh, operate under the lease model, right? Which is as an example, for example, for the leaf project in Selangor, adopt the outright sales model in which so local retirees can buy the unit made available by the developer outright. It expensive, which is uh, the cost is between around uh, uh, 980,000 um, ringgit and uh, a bit between uh, and two, uh, 2 2.6 million per unit. It's quite expensive in here, but they are provide uh, the very comprehensive, very um, is suitable for the for the uh, elderly, which is this is the the the, the project, uh, the degree leaf retirement resort. It's more to the resort concept. Then another thing for the list of list for the last model, you can see uh, there is a one project, Green Acres project in Perak, which is they sells the the unit, which is between. Uh, 300,000 uh, to 452,000 is, I think, this completed for the first phase. Now they are going to develop another another phase. It's quite high, the high demand uh, for this uh, this project. So, okay, this is the the where uh, the Green Acres Retirement Village uh, located, which is within uh, in uh, at Meru, Ipoh, Perak, and the last one is about the rental model. Okay, this is uh, this. I can say that it's more the cheaper one lah, because they only have to pay the rent around uh, 400 to 600 a month. So, which is, um, and I can say they're not, not uh, it's more, more to the rentals, rental concept. Okay. So, for in order to find out uh, uh, the, uh, the, the answers of the, 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 the objective of the study, which is we choose only two area, two case study. Uh, which the first one is Grand Acre Ipoh that I mentioned just now, which is located in Meru uh, Ipoh. Uh, it's totals uh, uh, tot, uh, the the uh, the project is about thirteen acres. Estimated gross development value between the seventy million to eighty million, which is uh, by adopted at least. Uh, list for life uh, models, uh, business model development. This is the 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 area as I mentioned, which is really completed for the first for the, for for the first phase. And I um through uh, our visit, which is is completed. I mean sold out already. So now they are going to to develop another phase, okay, for the second phase. 
it's a very nice place. It is very, um, you can say that it's very um, uh, comfortable, a very uh, um, comfortable, okay, for the elderly to stay in here. Okay. All right. Then another. Um, um, my dear, I just wanted to remind you that you have only one minute left. All right. Okay. Another case study, which is in uh, Eden, uh, on the park, which is uh, located uh, in the Kota Samahan Kuching Sarawak, which is more to the. This is the where uh, it's completed already. Okay, they are using the 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 sales outright and this uh, for life uh, model for the uh, in order to sell the the property. Okay, this is the 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 project itself. And then uh, through the through the case study, we found out that uh, four elements uh, how the developer, the both developer considered in terms of the choose uh, to choose the business model that uh, that uh, the developer adopted, which is the first one. Uh, the first element is about the sustainability, which is major. Um, the 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 uh, both of the developer concern in terms of the sustainability, which they are offered. Uh, the the facilities is. is uh, is uh, is suitable for the 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 target um, the, uh, the 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 target buyers, and the, the second one is about the practical practicality. Why they choose the, that business model? Uh, because of the uh, the the lease and the sales is more the practical instead of the the rental model. And then for the less itself, for example, for the Eden on the part, uh, project, they offered the lease between five to fifty years for the lease with, with flexible payment scheme for those who are unable to buy the, the unit. They offered the, the lease model. So, and the third one is about the profitability. I'm sure that they are, they are, they are, they are they, they're also thinking about the profitability from the, the, the project. Okay, and the last one about the availability. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the the important uh, point, the element which is the land availability, which is, uh, uh, the, uh and also the I mean, I'm sure that the, when we talk about the land, uh, the accessibility and so on, so so many things that they, they are thinking about the this the, this uh, this element as well. All right, so. Uh, as a conclusion, as you can say that, uh, which is the the element, uh, this uh, the elements such as sustainability, practicality, profitability, and land availability are the main con uh, contemplation to develop the retirement village. Uh, for the local developer, especially in Malaysia, have been so mindful and creative with the implementation of their respective retirement village business model. Okay, all right. I think that's all for from us. Okay, from, from me, uh, from us. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Valparina. Um, so yes. I just want to say that congratulations if we have a job. Uh, may I ask you to go back to yours? All right. For the slide, I mean? I want to check with you uh, whether you have any the problem how to be active for the second. You have it in your slide. Yeah, in your slide. Yeah. You find your research in an object. So, sorry, I can't hear. <laughs> so I said that I couldn't find any uh, beside where you have put it your aim and objectives. Do you have your aim and objectives in your slide? Oh, all right. Okay. No, no, I didn't put the, the mean and objective. Um... All right. So the beach is, this is something very important that unfortunately yeah. is missing. Otherwise, things are fine. And then my question is that how many people are, have chosen to live in Malaysian retirement villages? I mean, existing number. Do you have any existing number? Um, yeah, so far, uh, I don't have an existing number because uh, some of them already I mean, buy the... the the, the property from the case study they only buy but they didn't uh, they didn't live there until they retired they just buy for the for the for the retirement plan 
So they didn't stay okay. there. They just buy the property. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that means one thing which is missing was your aim and objective. You have a very good literature review coverage. Uh, I enjoyed your finding, discussion, and conclusion. So and then can you go to your methodology, please. The slide of research methodology. Yeah, this is yeah, almost yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so far, uh, from my understanding, you have done your effort, but the thing is that, uh, however, you had a very interesting graphic presentation of something missing. Like, I mean, your methodology. So you said that you have taken three cases, right? Can you hear me? Hello. Can you Not hear very me? smooth. Sorry, I um, um, just heard about that you uh, mentioned about the methodology, right? All right. I said that you have taken three case studies. Am I right? I mean, yeah, two yeah, two case, case studies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I selected as case study. Okay, and then so have you done observation or have you done a questionnaire? or have you done some interviews? So what was the next step after you have done, after you have selected your case studies, uh, how did you get this information? Oh, okay, for the case study, uh, we, uh, I, uh, uh, for the both case study, we only choose the the, the 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 selected uh, uh, the important uh, the selected person that can answer the question because we are going to ask the developer which yeah this is about the the the, the business yeah. model yeah so for this study we we only so uh, this is my when I ask you okay go ahead sorry with so, this study you have been so my dear, what I'm saying is that before I would ask this question from you, I didn't know that uh, you had how many questionnaire, how many questions you have asked, something which is missing in your slide. Ah, yes, yes, yes. That is missing in your slide presentation. What was your aim and object? Oh, thank you. Thank you for your advice uh, for, for, for the case study. But in, in the paper, the, 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 the articles that we wrote, we already uh, we mentioned about the 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 the, the article, I mean the all the about the question and every uh, and for the question question form for the interview. But I didn't mention in the slide. Sharona, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm so afraid I'm still here. But I couldn't see and couldn't hear from the, the chair, the chairperson. Right. Salfarina, are you still presenting? No, finish, finish already. We go for the, uh, just uh, answer a few questions from the Okay. From now, the right. chairperson. Sharona, Sharona is, is re-entering now, okay. All right, Sharona, what happened? <laughs> I don't know. We miss you. Yeah, sorry for the bad connection. <laughs> so I just want to summarize the previous presentation. I just wanted to mention here that um, her research was a very good uh, achievement for Malaysia. But the only thing was missing was, uh, first of all, insight, aim and objective, uh, which I could understand her point from conclusion and findings. But this slide was missing. And secondly, the research methodology. So when she has done so much effort to do this research with questionnaire and all these kinds of things, so I would rather to see in, in her slide as well, because this thing, otherwise, I like the presentation that was very informative. So um, is there any question from the previous presenter from the audience? Otherwise, can we proceed with our uh, next? Okay, so for the introduction of the study, it's actually uh, tourism. Okay, uh, tourism uh, sector is primarily made from the, okay, 
Thank you very much. For the introductions, for the local attention of food enterprise, it can be uh, primarily made from the micro, small and medium business. Uh, it also can be called as SME. So SME actually is presented as a tourism enterprise worldwide. In Malaysia, SME can be concluded as, uh, can be from five to anti 75 employees, uh, if we want to call as SME. So in tourist industry, uh, it's very, uh, SME play important roles in actually contributing the uh, income uh, for the country. So in this study, we actually focusing on the local protection of food entrepreneurs uh, that also include in under SME. Okay, traditional food business relation with COVID-19. Um, as you see, uh, after uh, during the pandemic COVID-19, it changed the way of how the food be, the food be, uh, choice and food consumer habits. So during this pandemic, it's also led to the local entrepreneur have to modify their, how they actually prepare, produce, and purchasing their food products. Okay, so many operators that actually sell this kind of food have to stop their, uh, their business and they have to close their premises. So this is indirectly actually resulted in development of the stalling of the heritage food uh, sustainability during the pandemic. So the objective of the study is actually to explore the local entrepreneur profiles criteria during the COVID pandemic. So here are the methodology. Uh, this study is using a qualitative approach whereby a semi-structured interview has been used. It adapted from the previous study. Uh, the time frame is actually from around October 2020 to until December 2021. It's about uh, almost one year. Uh, all the interviewees are uh, using the online and video uh, uh, conferencing and being tape recorded. This is because during at that time, we cannot you cannot go to face to face interview. And this is at the time the pandemic with the MCO, we cannot go outside from the our house. So we have to do this uh, online video and conferencing, uh, no other choice. So this interview is actually lasted for 30 to 40 minutes. Uh, the same structures questions is actually been verified, uh, verified before doing the actually the actual semi, uh, interviewing. So it's actually verified from the uh, review from the academic backgrounds uh, reference. So for the informants, it's actually coming from the local entrepreneurs that sold traditional food that actually uh, the traditional food that actually listed under national food heritage. So this informant is coming from the Selangor and Sabah states. Okay, I will show you the picture of the map of Malaysia. I show you which one is the Selangor, which one in the Sabah, uh, Sabah, Malaysia. So in Selangor, the most of the informant is coming from Lembah Klang, uh, and from the Sabah is actually coming from the big cities in the uh, in Sabah, uh, for example like Kota Kinabalu, uh, Sandakan. Uh, Tawau and so on. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we actually regarded the information data for the informants is more than 20 informants. But during the pandemic, we only, uh, and during the time frame, we only get 20 informants that agree to do the interview uh, during the, study, uh, the, the, the time, uh, time frame for the, our interview. So this is the only information, in, uh, the informants that we can get during that time. So all the informal related interview are being validated and get permission for the informant before starting analyzing. Uh, analyzing the data, the interview is being transcribed and transformed into coding and team. Uh, so during the transcribed interview, it's been categorized and in, uh, do it for doing for uh, deductive and inductive linear, uh, method. So, uh, one of the software being used actually to make it easier is using FSTI lah, to, to make the coding and teaming is much easier. So here are the map of the Malaysia. So this is two state that we are, uh, we are doing comparison. One is in uh, Selangor, one is in Sabah here. So here are the map. Okay, the results and discussion of this one. Day, uh, if you see here from the results of discussion, uh, there are 20 informants uh, coming from uh, Selangor here. 
uh, one to nine and from Sabah states one to uh, five here with different types of category of business category uh, from restaurants, stalls, house-based caterings uh, and also SME. So the age of the informants are between 30 to 71 years old uh, and have uh, experience between three to 24 years experience in business. So most of the uh, Selangor informants are uh, Malay. Uh, from the Sabah states is uh, from multi-ethnic backgrounds, uh, such as Dusun, Jawa, Brunei, Bajau, Bugis, as shown in everyone uh, here. So here are the, actually the team encoding that we, uh, we, uh, we are able to find. So there are two teams, food categories and business criteria. So under food categories, the coding will be categories of food, type of food, they will be sold by the informants. The business criteria is the how we are actually de definite or define what is actually the entrepreneur backgrounds based on experience, customer, and type of business. Okay, these are actually the categories of food actually coming from this is articles from the newspaper articles actually coming from the list of the national food heritage categories. Uh, so it can be categorized into rice, rice categories, uh, rice, uh, rice categories, uh, appetizer, uh, gravies, drinks. There are at least seven categories in uh, under national food heritage. So here are the food categories. Uh, for discussion. The first one is actually, if you see here in the pink one here from Selangor, you see here, most um, most of the food, uh, category of food that been informants that sold are under cake, porridge and desserts. And as for the Sabah informant, if you see here, most of them are mostly are same, similar, cake, porridge and desserts. But they also covering other types of categories also. So if you see here, uh, the, the, the list of the foods actually uh, very variety, very. Uh, but if you see in Selangor, actually they are covering most of the state in Malaysia because uh, most of the uh, people that we interview is coming from Lembah Kelang. So most of the background, then they have different background coming from different states. But in the Sabah, they actually coming from the local Sabah itself. Then they are covering their own, their own uh, local traditional food. Then also they also have also have the the national food heritage that actually they eat there. For example, like nasi lemak, also eat by in Selangor, but also eat in Sabah. Uh, for example, like the they are the different one is like sambal tuhau. Uh, Hinawa is, is not really familiarized in sell in uh, Selangor, uh, but it sells in Sabah because it's the local delicacy in Sabah. So, so here are the some of the uh, traditional food that we sell by the 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 uh, the, the informants. Uh, they are categorized under the national food heritage. Some of these, like we already know, is the Selama Tambaka. This one is from Sabah, Hinawa is most popular there. Quick Carpet is also familiarized in, uh, familiar in uh, Sabah and also familiar in uh, Selangor. Sate also familiar in Sabah, familiar in Selangor. Amuyat mostly familiar in uh, Sabah, not so much in Selangor uh, and Nasi Krabu. So here are the team two, the finding about business criteria of the informants. They will be identified under experience, customer profiles, and type of business. Here, if you see in the experience, uh, most of the Singapore, uh, Selangor informants, uh, they are, you have more experience than the Sabah uh, informants. Uh, for example, if you see under the backgrounds here, you see, most of them, if you see uh, the years of business here, uh, most of the Selangor, they have more than 24 years experience. Uh, the, in Sabah, most of them, are the, 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 uh, the, the longest one is a 15 years experience. So there is a big uh, difference on the business experience on the selling traditional food. So if you see here, um, they are... Uh, I just wanted to remind you that you have... Yeah. 
yeah two more slides okay two more slides okay uh the most of the them are selling uh the traditional food based on their family legacies uh and also for example like family recipes and some of them uh, they have a knowledge of the local ingredients for example like in Sabah they're selling uh like uh Bambangan pickles. If you see here, there is a picture of the fruits of Bambangan. They actually are uh, the only uh, fruits that actually been eaten in Sabah and Sarawak, uh, not familiarized in Selangor. Uh, for example, uh, the third one, uh, uh, the second one is customer profile. Most of the Selangor and Sabah informants, they share similar customer. Most of them are local. Uh, but before, uh, we also done an interview asking them before the COVID-19, who is their customer. As most uh, the Selangor and Sabah also have similar international customer that come to the place to eat. So actually, they both have common uh, customer profile uh, eating the traditional food. So if you see here, uh, for the third one is the type of business. So during the COVID nineteen, they have to change the way of they implemented their business method. So they also selling the the uh, if before MCO they selling their traditional food in the premises, but during MCO, they are using the online replication, uh, such as using WhatsApp and also Facebook. Uh, if you see here, why they only use WhatsApp and Facebook is based on their age, uh, how uh, because of the age influence the way of the use the applications. Uh, and also the findings shows that the question of using online actually is very low, uh, especially people who are businessmen who you are, you are selling traditional foods. Uh, but to sustain for the traditional food selling, so the entrepreneur have to change the way of the way they do business, such as using the uh, technology, such as the electronic media. So. If you see the Saba and Slango, this is like informant of traditional, uh, they share similar food categories and business criteria. But the only difference is on their based on the experience and also the way they continue to, uh, uh, to do the new way to sustain uh, business uh, uh, family legacies and also business based traditional food to uh, get the extra income. So they have to adapt. With the changes during the uh, pandemic, so after the country offers borders for overseas starting April twenty two, they have we we will expect that the session business will be attract a regular customer that actually all usually come, but they also will attract a new customer using the new technology uh, to come to the premises or online platform. Uh, this is because of the, the new way of the method just. This is actually a suggestion whereby we suggest that this study is still must be continuing and documented as the local session food that uh, entrepreneur changes is to be focused and encouraged for the our local cultural heritage. So this is the end of the conclusion. Uh, this paper is actually funded by under UST Master Sabah uh, under the grant of SDN, uh, instrument for our member researchers from UMS, uh, UI, uh, UIUM, and UITM, and uh, my postgraduate students. Uh, that's all. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you made me feel missing Malaysian food. OK. <laughs> Especially Naslama, Miss Naslama. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to check with you a mm -hmm. few things. Mm -hmm. uh, very good job, very good research. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to check with you the point things. Regarding your literature review, since mm -hmm. it's going to be, I mean, your research is quite avant garde and um, very new for the nation, did you face any problem? regarding uh, referencing and citation because as I guess uh, this is the first research regarding food entrepreneur during COVID in Malaysia, right? Yeah, uh, for traditional food, uh, yes, yeah. a little bit difficult to find some of the literature, but for the local business entrepreneur, there is a lot actually some research done during pandemic. Uh, I have to actually... Okay, to, so that means yeah. my question is that... Mm. Yeah, how could you cover uh, the support of literature review when you have this uh, lack of references? So, um, 
So I'm 100% sure that you have done a good literature review support, but uh, since I couldn't uh, find it in your site, I just wanted to check with you. How did you the, support the find that by yeah. the literature review? Yeah, for the literature review, the finding for traditional food entrepreneur in Malaysia is a little bit lack of. Uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, there is yeah. uh, articles there, but the one that I use is actually from the overseas. The, the, uh, because during twenty twenty until twenty twenty two, there is a lot of. Uh, findings about the traditional food in overseas. So I use the literature in overseas to for the comparison okay. for the yeah for the Malaysia punya local traditional food. That was that one was my answer. I just wanted to check yeah. whether you have done yeah. because I yeah. uh, I was quite right. I guess that you couldn't find enough literature to support. Mm -hmm. And then um, in your conclusion, you mentioned that uh, this research should be continued by the other research in future. Uh, however, your title is during COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so it's a little bit more confusing to me that you wanted to, because your previous uh, title was fine as well, but however, you have changed it mm. and then you have narrowed down yeah. Try to um, during COVID nineteen. So my question is that if you have uh, narrowed down your title to pandemic COVID nineteen pandemic, and then it's still you consist that other researchers should follow up and do more research. So do you see any COVID coming back? Uh, I hope not. <laughs> but yeah. uh, because uh, <laughs> yeah. I hope not the COVID not pandemic is coming because I just said that, that this actually uh, the one that I suggest the conclusion is actually the continuous uh, study on the during pandemics uh, and after pandemic doing do uh, do a comparison a research on the difference or there is is there any differences between the the matter of business or the impact of the, uh, the COVID nineteen on that yeah. yeah. Actually, I just wanted to uh, bring you to this point that maybe mm. you didn't need to put this um, pandemic in your title. Your previous okay. title was very suitable, traditional for local entrepreneur mm. um, way to future, something mm. like that. So what I'm saying is that okay. when you when you narrow it on to pandemic COVID-19, so it's going to be like, mm -hmm. uh, it might be over. So why not we use the strength point of your research, which is talking about future of food delivery and food services in Malaysia. So uh, you could just focus on that one. Okay. I yeah, know that sure, you have sure. done comparison study mm, yeah. regarding, I mean, existing condition. I mean, yeah, during COVID and before COVID, I understand. Yeah. But you didn't need to put it in your title. It's my opinion. Right. It takes it, uh, since you have changed it, I'm just like doing that. Otherwise, um, as everyone knows, Malaysia has done a very good job during COVID. And then mm -hmm. uh, your research and your um, colleague's research could definitely help the effort of the nation as well. Um, I like your presentation. That was uh, very interesting, and I'm sure that it can help the nation. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, uh, if there is no comment from you or any other audience, we can go back to Ms. Naturi. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, and share it. So share it. Good luck with your future presentation. Thank you. Thanks, my dear. So, Ms. Nacheri, are you there? Yes. Sorry for the thing that happened. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Okay. It's happening. Uh, so, your 10 minutes start from now. Are you, are you ready now? Yes. Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, try to share. We can hear you, but just try to share your slides. Can you see my slide yet? So I'll be, I can see my picture and then your screen. So I will up my video.
and my uh, mic. Okay. Um, so you can see my slide already, right? And my voice? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Let me start now. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Nashali Gantong, and I'm from Department of Architecture, National Chongkong University, Taiwan. The topic that I will present today is interdependencies related to attention restoration for mental fatigue, a scoping review. According to the attention restoration theory, the cognitive capacity of human for direct attention is limited. This skill will decline if the prolonged continuous concentration is required. The hypothesis posits that recovering is a vital for preserving health and well being, is a psychological resource for the lack attention. Fascination, being aware, acting, and compatibility help to determine if the environment makes us conducive to attention, and moreover, it may contribute to the restorative process. This theory implies that healing properties are not implemented to any one setting, but depend on human-human and human-environment interaction. This ecological outcome for daily exposure to the natural environment may be constrained by the transaction property leading to distillation. Previous research found that components within BS are interdependent between each other. Each component has a different degree of interdependence depending on many factors, which is a different result. From the previous at attention restoration theory affects mental fatigue recovery. However, at the same time, the interdependent promote or inhibit the process of attention restoration. This issue led to the scoping review this time. How does attention restoration relate to in the interdependent that affect mental fatigue recovery? This paper investigates and gather data on the cost constant rehabilitation of mental fatigue linked with art components that correlate with perceived setting interdependencies to identify the relationship between the component of art and interdependency that affect mental fatigue recovery by using scoping review. The transaction to mental recovery sometimes constrained by the situation that limit access. Uh, to the natural environment, such as in age, uh, on age and better condition. Natural experiences are common in being spread in bustling cities. Alternatively, when access to the natural environment is restricted, the connection with nature is the result of an individual engagement in an experience of interaction with nature. A busy and noisy urban environment individual attitude, work state, and other factors that may constrain and individual access to the natural environment. About methodology in the part of study selection, the population comprises art component or interdependent related to the physical environment. This relative impact on mental fatigue must be reported. All study type are admissible. And the study selection organization that can show that document identified through database searching on October 2021 and update again on 2022. Full text publication evaluated for inclusion in the qualitative synthesis are 15 paper. Characteristic of the whole paper lead for the synthesis is a study that correlates interdependency with art component, the interdependent of BS. Study related to constant attention restoration within the scope of environment human and on indicator promoting attention restoration. Mental fatigue under aspect of us has concentrated on human environment interaction component. Many of the natural environment attraction qualify as soft fascination. For example, sunset, cloud, and wind driving leap motion. Attending to this pattern is uncomplicated and afford sufficient time for other consideration. Being where psychological separation from the task and routine for which the for which, which the direct attention capacity is employed. Opportunity for escalation and engagement with the surrounding environment. Attend point to the degree of coherence and the possibility for escalation and interaction with the environment. Uh, compatibility occur when the environment met the activity that each person try to do. Each goal must be consistent with the environment need. Combining four components is most common in natural setting. 
keeping natural setting is a more substantially stolen heat potential. Interdependence effect on mental fatigue. Each behavioral setting has a level of interdependence within itself, and also found that it's also interdependent between behavior setting. In evaluating the degree of interdependency between two settings, it is assumed that the seven dimension can reveal interdependency between two environments. The more each dimension occur in the same way, the more dimension of the two settings has interdependent. Having interdependence between setting is also a effect a factor that make it more difficult for us to acquire a sense of psychological separation from work-related obligation, personal life issue, and daily hustle. The attention restoration study found that the natural environment can relieve mental fatigue and interdependence between the two settings may affect the constraint of the restorative mental fatigue. Individuals who spend their leisure time in wilderness park experience a decrease in being away and less restorative effect when they are aware of people and activity they encounter at work. This is due to the interdependence between BS and their association with daily stress and demand. And another study found that when individuals perceive interdependencies increasingly between work environment and leisure time setting, health related outcome and being away were restricted. Considering the relationship between the component of PSI and art in terms of behavior, about fascination related to behavior to the environment should contain attractive stimuli and the individual must readily respond to the environment. Objects that do not promote restoration, such as threat and construction card, affect fascination. Person and leader, if seeing a colleague in the rest area, it truly might workplace be it. Being away is reduced. Cognition, mental distance from situation that make it impossible to stop thinking can constrain the sense of being away. Location effect to an attend because climate impact activity, they are obstructing access to the area. And the last is cognition, like uh, limit, limited experience may affect the ability to meet individual needs that lead to compatibility. Um, interdependence can affect mental fatigue with the component of art. However, the strength of evidence on how component of art affecting interdependence still need to be improved from the previous literature. They, there is not much literature on the component of art effect on interdependence. And this is for my present today. Thank you. Hello. It's not sure. Yes, sorry, I was So I was telling the other question. There was a comment which, um, according to your title, which I make it as art, uh, for the first time in 1995, Kaplan was the first one who mentioned that and then said that uh, the solution for art is going to be time spent indoor to avoid the stressors and look at the nature is to uh, first mm. okay okay so i will make it very fast first of all i said that according to Kaplan, who was the pioneer um, the, the first the main researcher who has focused on the topic of art in 1995 mm. he said mm. that as a solution to art is time spending indoors and looking at the nature so anyone who a study regarding art, they would mm. refer to Kaplan, but it was missing in your research. When I mean, no green architecture or uh, looking having the nature connection with the nature uh, for the people to avoid uh, the effect of art but that was missing, which I wanted to have your explanation. And mm. uh, secondly, you mentioned regarding the environmental factors. When you say environmental factors, we have two type of environmental factors, environmental physical factors or psychological factors. When you mix them together, it's quite confusing. You mentioned oh. you put some kind of factors which are not related. When you talk about noise, you said that noise, stresses and all these things, so noise is physical factors. However, you put the um, the stress, I mean, daily life stress and stress from the work, so these are psychological. So you, you have uh, make it a little bit unclear 
by environmental factors, what do you mean exactly? Uh, which are my suggestion for you is to make it categorize, make it more clear. When you're doing some mm -hmm. research, it should be a little bit more serious. Otherwise, the graphic was fine. The topic is interesting, but mm -hmm. uh, please put it into your consideration. First of all, I mean, read about Kaplan, a statement regarding the art, and then when you talk about environmental factors, be very careful because it's something very sensitive. Better to make it categorized. Okay, because uh, this one I study focused on the urban park, the natural environment in the urban park, about all that, the art component that make people can restoration attention. But at the same time, I found that it have another theory is the behavioral setting. They said that like people cannot like 100% distillation from art component because they got uh, interdependencies yeah. that like they're still thinking about work, mm -hmm. something like that, that made people like cannot uh, relax or distillation completely. So the point of study of literature this time is for God that with the in the scale of interdependence that make people can cannot receive art component. Yes. And the next step that I will do with my work is focus on the location because this one is talk about survey or receive the uh, getting data, something like that. Did I answer the colleague? <laughs> Okay, it's fine. But for me, it's like, I mean, for your future studies, I would uh, recommend you to consider the difference between environmental factors. Mm -hmm. don't, don't, don't make your readers confused by psychological factors should be divided, mm -hmm. definitely, in my opinion. Oh, okay. 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 So thank you. If there is no comments from you or any other audiences, we can proceed with our with next year research. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's okay. It's it's okay. I understand. So good luck for your future studies. Uh, can I have uh, Anna Duli Thank share? You. You're welcome. Can I have um, Anna Andalucia? Our next presentation, which is a street of place as an attraction of heritage area in Medan City, Indonesia. Thank you. So welcome. Uh, please introduce yourself and your co-authors or co-presenter and let me know if you have any international uh, author to present with you. And I just want to remind you, you have 10 minutes to present and 12 minutes for Q&A. Are you ready for the slide sharing? Thank you. So good luck with your presentation. I can see your slide and I can hear you. Okay. Uh, uh, thank you for the time you have told me. My name is Andalusia. Uh, I'm a student doctoral program in architecture and urban planning faculty engineering University of uh, Sumatra Utara, Medan, Indonesia. Uh, the title of uh, this paper is Spirit of Place as an Attraction of Heritage Area in Medan City, Indonesia. Okay. 
uh, introduction. A place must have a a place must have an atmosphere to fill its soul or spirit, which can set which 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 can set it apart from another place, and is typically created by the unique activity of the people who live there. There is specific uh, uh, there, there, there is specific activity usually usually give a place its special meaning. Schools 1918. The spirit of place is performed from two aspects, namely tangible and intangible aspect, Garham 1985. Tangible aspect, tangible aspect plays a role in uh, farming a place, versus intangible aspect give a spirit to a place. Quebec Declaration Ecomos 2008. Why identifying the spirit of place in historical area is very important. First, it gives uh, the area its uh, character. Second, the spirit of place in an area brings out the uniqueness and the characteristic. Third, maintain a particular area, social, physical attribute, and spiritual sustainability. And the last, uh, spirit extensi in a place can potential increase its tourism attraction. Literature review, spirit of place. The spirit of place, genius logic, are the characteristic of the place that people have known for a long time that distinguish that the place from the other place. Schools, uh, 1918. Uh, there is uh, some of the literature review uh, from uh, according the research, uh, Garham, that say the spirit of place in an non-physical and physical force that can form an impression in the city. Ecomos uh, 2008 said that spirit of place an element that consists of the physical and spiritual element that give meaning, value, emotion, and mystery to the place. Stella 2008 the uh, tell that the spirit of place can change a building that lives Revitalize it or have a change in the function. Uh, Ripa Glow, 2008, the spirit uh, said that the spirit of place depends on the future of the site and the logical relationship between the occupant and the place. Silva, 2015, said that the spirit of place demand as a collection of the meaning that developed from the interaction of the negotiation between a place and its people within a particular historical and the cultural setting. And Sofia, uh, 2017, this tells that the spirit of place gives the area its atmosphere and shape of the public perception of the same of the religion greatest attraction. According to several literature that has been reviewed, uh, it can be concluded that the spirit of place is a non-physical and physical element that gives meaning, value, and emotion to the place that depends on the relationship between the place and the people and give atmosphere and shape an impression of the city. So the spirit of place has two aspects, namely, tangible and intangible. Tangible can be used, can be seen from special scale, intensity, landmarks, building, environment, and public space. Intangible aspect, according to a school's 1918, intangible can be seen from memories, value, meaning, beliefs, and emotion. Methodology. The methodology of these studies use a literature review with a narrative review method. This study made to find the spirit of place in the heritage area, 
tourism attraction in Medan City and the relationship between the spirit of place and tourist attraction. This step that must be carried out in the literature review are planning the review, conducting the review, and reporting the review. Findings. To understand the spirit of place in an area, we have to bring out the spirit of place by displaying the aspect of image, place, space, character, and genius logic from the urban context through the two spaces, namely natural places and man-made places, where three aspects from the place, namely meaning, identity, and history. Problems that exist in place can be solved by farming a place and discussing how the current place has lost its essence and it always and it also being recovered to from the spirit of place in that place. Aspect of farming genealogy. According uh, to some literature that has been reviewed in the following table, we can see that aspect from genealogy, so uh, uh, aspect of genealogy. So a uh, genealogy is formed from three aspects, namely image, space, and character. But three are two different points of view. But there are two different points of view based on Sirigar, Gumsari, Habibullah, and Eko Madjo that uh, tell the, uh, the image is formed by the historical and cultural background, activities and social interaction between people and socio-cultural place. Space is described as a place uniqueness and character are formed from a strong history and are unique from various groups and cultures. Meanwhile, according to Hadi, Kafa, Regina, and Ekomadio, image is a uniqueness of a place or a culture. Space is formed by culture activity and activities. Character is formed from the local culture. So it can be concluded that according to Sirigar, Agumsari, Habibullah, and Ekomadio, genius logic are the cultural diversity from, from, formed from the history of economic activity in religions. And according to Hadi, Kafa, Regina, and Ekomadio, genius logic are tangible aspects based on image, space, and character analysis. Genius logic are also described as a guardian spirit of the place. Place, a, place, a space can become a place if the space is known better and given a value. One, 1977. Schools, 1980, started that a place that three important components, meaning, identity, and history. The spirit of place is the soul or spirit built by humans to maintain a particular area, social, physical attribute, and spiritual sustainability. The spirit of place focus on aspect of the physical and human environment, but does not cover the behavior of the inhabitants. Tourist attraction. According to Suwan Toro, 2004, a tourist attraction can increase visitor to a, to a place. Natural, natural, will, cultural, and social attraction fall under tourist attraction. Middleton, 1995, and January, 2012. Visitor can sense the significance of the place that have a spirit. The relationship between a person's soul and a place is influenced by the meaning that a place creates. Visitors may be drawn to the region development 
like and uh, development and uh, connecting that will encourage them to return and love their stay. The relationship between the spirit of place and tourism attraction, the use of historic building or tourism product is one way or out for those for these buildings to continue mm -hmm. to survive with oh the increasing power of modern facility around them. Using historic uh, building as tourist attraction, also yeah. process server challenge become conservation meanings are always required in addition to have an economic impact on the community. One way to be done is to change old buildings that are no longer used for have been abandoned into new building that support the city's tourism, the city's tourism activity. Not a new building in the city have been neglected due to change in function, city dynamic trend and community activities. Please have in mind that um, you have to manage your time. Okay. Uh, the conclusion. The uh, spirit of place is the character of the place that can especially become part of the religion image that will become the identity, the identity of the religion. By maintaining it, the religion will still be able to survive and be sustainable. The, the research was conducted in area that have elements of cultural heritage, history, and tourism that, be, that become potential for the area, namely urban conservation building with historical value and which have uniqueness and activity in the, in the area which play a significant role in the formation of the spirit of peace, Sampiano 2008. Uh, the uh, Maimon Palace, Chong Afe Mansion, and Post Block are suitable building to reflect of the spirit of place in heritage area in Medan City because there are three buildings reflect three important roles in the growth of Medan City, namely as a representative building for the Delhi, Delhi Malay Sultan, Chinatown, and the Dutch colonial, colonial religion. The research is limited to the spirit of place in the area around the building of Istana Maimun, Chong Afe, Mansion, and Post Block. So future research is needed on the other factors supporting tourism attraction development. Okay, uh, thank you. So, thank you. Okay, any questions the audience? Okay. Uh, Margie, it's a very personal question. May I know your background? What was your PhD? Was it in architecture or preservation? Uh, I'm in research uh, with uh, as uh, spirit of place as an attraction uh, for tourism heritage Medan city Indonesia and I research uh, a pattern uh, no I know your PhD. I know uh, what is your major study is it architecture or is it preservation or tourism? I'm in urban. urban architecture. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. That was uh, very informative. Um, the only thing which I have no write down a note from you was um, the methodology. Can you can you go back to the slide of your research methodology, please? Methodology. Okay. Can you enlarge it? So you see, your referencing is 1980. Yes. I, yeah, so however, I'm 100% sure that you could find a recent 
more recent citations. Okay. So, um, my suggestion to you is that um, try to cite the more recent literature and references. Okay, thank you. Okay, otherwise, there's no comment. Very good. Job. I'm very well done. Okay, thank you for your. Thank you. So, if there is no more comment or any any um, question from the audience, can we proceed with our next presenter regarding fluid risk trend by using PCA? Presenting by uh, Jurina. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, you okay. are there. Yeah, I'm here. But I do. Uh, I have a problem with you. Uh, my internet connection. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but I cannot I can, see you. Yeah, but I have problem with the internet connection. I uh, may I just uh, continue with my presentation? Is it okay without okay, the video? Please, sure. No, no, it's uh, fine. Um, just share. I mean, it, that would be a benefit to see you while presenting. But I understand the issue with the internet, so it's fine. Go ahead, and then please introduce yourself and uh, if you have any international co-presenter. Otherwise, your 10 minutes starts from now. Good luck. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So um, I'm actually the corresponding author together with me. I have uh, Nur Shamimi and Zul Hafizal as a co-author. But I also have Nur Kudus. He's, uh, uh, he's from uh, Semarang, Indonesia. And uh, he's, he's one of our co-author that... Uh, uh, we, we, instead of uh, the Malaysian, and we also have the connection with Indonesia. So I'm glad to introduce my um, authors. So I would like to present uh, today. It's about a case study on the flood risk trend by using PCA and SPC analysis at Muda River Kedah. So uh, just an overview about this study, actually, um, in Malaysia, okay, now we have uh, about raining season and somehow, um, of course, this is a natural disaster in Malaysia. So uh, this is the main for the concern of sustainable development goals. So this is one of the concerns that to stay, uh, I mean, safe. And also we need to know uh, what actually the reason why the flood is keep coming uh, in one area. So in this study, so I would like to focus at Muda River. So it's a more concern that to analyze how the flood risk pattern in this area and what actually the variables that contribute to the flooding. Is it by the natural occurrence or human activities? Um, mainly, we would like to aim uh, on reducing the impact and also the flood by focusing on to, uh, the, the sustainable development. Okay. So that is the um, main summary of this study. So why is related to sustainable development? Okay. Great. Okay, the presentation outline, uh, okay, I already talked about the background of the study, the second part on the methodology and the third part result and discussion. And lastly is the conclusion. Okay, um, we have um, types of floods in Malaysia. So normally we call the flood as the flash flood, whereby the event is happen uh, in a short time within, we have a rainfall. Then uh, we get the flood immediately. We call a flash flood. Uh, means that it's normally it happen in the city, and the other flood is a we call a normal flood where it comes from the river normally. So um, the main reason of the flood is come from uh, rainfall, the natural occurrence, and also plus with the human activity. So, so the impact, definitely the, the impact is on the property and the financial. 
and definitely affect the environment, life and health. So the goal of this study actually is for the detection, uh, the variables that uh, trigger the flood, whereby we use the PCA and SPC is a type of the statistical analysis. Yeah? So um, uh, PCA is the principal component analysis and SPC is a statistical process control that we need uh, to identify the key data variables that trigger a flood. So this is very important in, in order that we maintain the area so that uh, everyone will keep safe and uh, for the development. Okay, um, the, my study area is Yan Kedah. Um, in, year, in year 2020, we have uh, three, uh, three event of flash flood that comes on the consecutive uh, event. Yeah, it happened in year in 2020 and lots of life and property uh, mean uh, is lost. And um, based on the first overview about the causes of the flood is due to the rainfall. And then uh, normally uh, they relate with the climate change and the human activities. Okay, but to confirm that the variables that the floods come from the climate change or either the club from the, the event uh, based on the climate change or the event that come from the human activities. So what we did, uh, we will try to analyze by using PCA and SPC to uh, determine the variables, what the causes of the flood. And of course, um, this is the several reasons why uh, the researchers um, and uh, I mean the government uh, would like to know the main reason of the flood uh, that comes uh, in Kedah at that time. Okay, uh, we focus on uh, three data collection. It's the uh, RL is the rainfall, and then uh, WS is water level, and SW or SF is the stream flow. Yeah. So uh, we focus on the, uh, the, the whole catchment we call uh, Sungai, uh, Sungai Muda in Kedah. And then uh, the, the study area cover from the, uh, uh, gen, the rainfall data come from station Jenyang Clinic. And then the stream flow data come from Sungai Muda Jenyang and water level at that uh, study area. And we have a uh, statistical analysis that we call correlation test, Butler, Kaiser, and uh, PCA and SPC. Okay. Then uh, from the analysis, we make a comparison with uh, data, recorded data from rainfall and also from the uh, data from forest uh, loss area for the year 2019 to 2021. Okay, uh, this is uh, comes to the result in the discussion. We can say that um, based on the result, we can see the procedure that uh, to collect the variables for PCA and uh, SPC. We can see the correlation test. Yeah? The correlation test shown that um, by using Butler's uh, sphericity test, and Kaiser KMO, Kaiser Mayer Olkin test, it shows that the hypothesis test and the p value for Butler's test is below 0 0.05. So it shows that significant. And while the KMO, the Kaiser Mayer Olkin value roughly show uh, around 0 0.5, uh, whereby both are showing uh, acceptable result for PCA factoring, uh, to, to proceed with the analysis of PCA factoring, we, should, we can see that the variables that we select, the rainfall, the stream flow, and the water level fit the analysis. So uh, we can see that um, the capacity that we use uh, the data, the rainfall, the stream flow, and also the water level uh, is somehow uh, is the main variables that contribute to the flood in this area. So this, the correlation and the KMO and MSA to confirm that the selection of data to verify the flood is on the right track. Yeah. 
Then uh, for the overall result, you can see that uh, in Bartlett and also Kaiser uh, shows that uh, both value uh, are on the acceptable point. And then uh, this is to confirm that uh, we can proceed to uh, PCA analysis. Yeah. Okay, then this is on the PCA. Okay, so we can say that in PCA, the first procedure is to analyze the factors or eigen values. We can see here the factor had to be more than one. Yeah, so you see that the result on F1 is more than one, then F1 is chosen since it shows the highest variance 64.43 and as compared to other factor F2 and F3. So uh, for value of eigen factors, uh, we select the group of F1 because the data shows that it's more than one. And then we move to the second step, the correlation factors between the factors and the variables, where you can see the SF is the stream flow and the water level shown uh, the value is more than, uh, it's near to one, zero, uh, the, the stream flow SF is 0 0.96, the water level is 0 0.97, at the bottom you can see the table. Dear Jorin, uh, your time is up, can you just manage oh, yeah. your time please? All right, all right. So in the second step, you can see the correlation between factor variable uh, is anal analyzed where you can see that both uh, showing that uh, is high is near to one and you can see that the um, the very max rotation um, has simplified the result so the result from this has shown that the uh, sf the stream flow contribute to the event the flood in sungai muda river basin so we can conclude that the uh, main reason of the flood is due to the stream flow right so uh, it's not uh, depending on the rainfall itself, but it's more to the stream flow uh, on this area. So on the uh, result where we can see here is on the SPC, you can see this analysis. Yeah. We can see this uh, risk factor uh, pattern uh, on those variables, okay? So uh, at the end, uh, when we have those analysis and we compare with the uh, itself, the, the primary forest loss, we have uh, effect to the why the flood uh, occur in this area. So definitely, definitely the, the, the deforestation also play a part in this uh, a flat event. Okay, so uh, as a conclusion, um, so definitely, so in order for us to sustain uh, the development or those in the area, uh, we need to identify the main reason why uh, the flat uh, happened. But, and the SPC analysis that shows that uh, all the variables exceeded the upper control limit uh, whereby it can be used as a pattern as an input pattern for risk factor uh, for for the uh, we can say uh, for any system i mean flood, flood event for the system early flood event system and the third one you can see that uh, 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 loss area had uh, also uh, contribute to the uh, flood event that happened in Kedah. So um, we can conclude that um, even that we we um, even that we are looking at the natural event, but somehow uh, the human activity also play a part in this area. That's why it's the that's why um in to maintain uh, the area in one area, so there is a uh, many factors that we have to see, uh and further to make analysis further. So that's all from me.
Yeah. So, uh, okay, I'm open to any. Okay, uh, any question from the audience, please? Do you hear me? Sorry? I asked whether any question from the audience. Mm, not so clear. You you have any? Right. Do you ask me? Yeah, yes. Sorry. Can you can you please go uh, to your slide? Um, I guess regarding your findings and uh, uh, on which the part? Results, the findings. Can we go back to findings, please? Where is it? Here. So this is conclusion, the results, and discussion. Yeah. Okay. So, um, all right. So my dear, but my, my suggestion to you is that when you have been given a template for your slide, and which I guess you have been given uh, from the conference, that uh, you should come up with the finding and discussion so that recommendation and conclusion. So my suggestion to you is that divide them. So better to divide your uh, findings from the discussion. Because uh, in terms of discussion, it's going to be a little bit of like your own opinion. But when you talk about the results, the findings, it's purely uh, your research finding. So it's going to, I just want to make, avoid any confusion by uh, the yeah. readers. Yeah. When it, when it comes to your presentation, for me, according to experience, it's better to divide the findings and right. discussion. Okay, all right. Okay. No, uh, okay. Thank you. So, all right, thank you. Thank you for uh, your input. Okay. You're welcome. So I have no more comments. Um, good luck with your future studies. You too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, nice to you. So, right. Thank you. Same here, my dear. So, uh, can we proceed with our last but not least presenter, Mr. Tariq Mohammed? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Okay, great. I will share my slide now. Sure. Urban quality of life in. Uh, can you hear me? Can you hear me now, please? Um, yes, I can hear you. Okay, so I will start now. If you can manage the time, so your 10 minutes is start from now, but can you please introduce, uh, if you have any co-author or co-presenter international? Uh, no, we are... Uh, uh, co uh, my co-authors are my professors here in Egypt, anyway, and I will introduce them now. Thank you, Shukran. Okay. Uh, uh, my name is. Uh, slide, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so. Minutes. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's my honor to participate in this conference. Uh, my name is uh, Tariq Muhammad Tariq, and my co-authors are Professor Dr. Amal Abdul and Professor Dr. Ahmad Ghani. Uh, my research title is the Urban Quality of Life in Master City, an assessment of the reformation project of the built environment. I will start by mentioning the announced uh, vision of Egypt 2030, which uh, aimed to improve the quality of life and welfare to all Egyptians. Uh, through a framework of development projects, uh, such as the formation of the road network in the Great uh, Cairo region, uh, which were meant to link between the West cities and the East cities of Cairo. Uh, and Nasser City, which is my study area, is one of the linking cities between them. The research aim to, is to assess the satisfaction rate of the residents toward the reformation project. Therefore, my uh, theoretical frame uh, will uh, focus on the concept of renewal, uh, urban renewal, uh, to enhance the quality of life in declining urban areas. 
and the dimensions of urban quality of life and the physical and non-physical dimensions to perceive urban spaces and the relation between them. And in this study, I will focus on the psychological side of urban quality of life as it the most effective uh, aspect of urban quality of life in the satisfaction rate. And to measure it, uh, I will be using the uh, Lynch um, uh, method of uh, measuring the uh, uh, of measuring the dimensions of perceived urban spaces. And uh, for my study area, uh, Nostra City was designed, uh, the master plan was designed by architect Said Karim in the 1960s. And it was designed to be a city within a city uh, that has its own service and uh, has its self-sufficiency. And uh, in 19, uh, sorry, um, 2019, the government started to implement the reformation project of uh, uh, the road network of Greater Cairo region uh, in Nusra City. And during the implementation till now, there is more than 15 uh, vehicle bridges were built and many public green spaces were partially or entirely uh, uh, occupied by uh, vehicle support facilities and uh, private recreational uh, buildings. Uh, so first, I had to do uh, interviews with some uh, of Master City's residents. Uh, they were chosen based on their location of uh, of their res residencies in in Egypt. Uh, sorry, in Cairo, there's a North City, uh, and <clears throat> and the questions were related to uh, perceive uh, the urban spaces, uh, either is physical or non-physical. And it was indicated that the most of the interviewees uh, preferred the state before uh, the reformation project. At the, the satisfaction rate now is below the, the average of before. Um, after that, uh, I had to uh, understand the reason for that. And I did a survey with 320 residents from the ages between 15 and 65. Uh, those 14 questions uh, were covering the aspects of urban quality of life uh, to measure the satisfaction rate of the current state uh, after the, after the <clears throat> reformation project. And the result indicated that um, um, only, or should I say the question of number six and eight uh, were uh, interested in the transportation network and traffic flow uh, go the high grade uh, for uh, after uh, I mean after the reformation project that uh, the transportation system is more efficiently operating now, but unfortunately for the other aspects like the green areas, the pub, social public spaces uh, were graded from one to three maximum uh, because it affected their satisfaction rate uh, for the urban area and the city. And by analyzing the previous uh, survey uh, regarding the dimension of urban quality of life, it was concluded that the mobility dimension was the only dimension that was enhanced under the formation project, but the other uh, aspects uh, were either same or mostly were uh, became lower. And here, um, Multiple choices were uh, addressed to measure the recent satisfaction with different aspects of urban quality of life uh, before and after the reformation project in Master City. And uh, for uh, four questions were satisfied before the reformation, and the other two were basic, basically for the also the um, transportation and vehicle transportation mainly. And uh, from this, I went to the conclusion that uh, the Greater Cairo uh, Region Reformation Project main object was to enhance the quality of life in Nostra City uh, by easing the traffic flow 
and other, but unfortunately, uh, they focused only on the transportation and the roads, uh, but uh, on, on the cost of the uh, greeneries and open spaces and social uh, public areas, uh, which affected on the, their certification rate with the project and uh, affecting it negatively in their uh, quality of life. Uh, therefore, my recommendations was basically at first uh, the local authority or the government should first and uh, they need to hold the progress of the project because it's still in uh, progress uh, and uh, consider uh, the pedestrians uh, who uh, do not feel safe now to so provide safe crossings, uh, friendly sidewalks, uh, place transportation stops uh, instead of the private recreational uh, spaces they created. Um, and for the built quality, uh, built environment quality, uh, it, uh, I, it was recommended that to use the horizontal and vertical uh, open spaces, or should I say surfaces, uh, to compensate the lost green areas through green walls uh, or parks, uh, and also to conserve the existing parks and green uh, elements, uh, and do not uh, to not be uh, occupied by. Uh, more projects. Thank you.